Hello my delicious co-creators, Lilou here, I'm on the Juicy Living Tour in Barcelona, ooh la la, I'm finally in Spain, I made it, I love it. This is the very first interview of the little mini Spanish tour, because this is my first kind of contact with Spain, but I'm excited, you have a wonderful culture, very much loving, this, there's people from all around the world watching this channel, so it's quite exciting to share not only, you know, your expertise with food and, and all of that, but also, you know, the culture and the Spanish culture and since we're going to speak of you know the energy related to food and the vibration and what our, our body needs I would love to first hear you know your background and your expertise so we know really what we're going to speak of in, in your area but also you know speak of the, the the food for what is the food what does the food represent for Spanish people and their relationship because since there's people from America watching and from France I know there is some probably some blockages around food that might be a bit different but tell us about you your background first of all okay I'm Monse and uh, I have been working with food and energy for the last 40 years of my life and uh, I started in Barcelona then I went to France as well I live quite along there with a lot of teachers uh, England and I travel all around the planet really, Japan, America, to really understand energy. We are energy. So energy in the food, uh, we will talk a little later all about that. Energy about food, energy in our emotional body, in our mind. So it's very important to understand the human being as a uni unity. Yeah. So this is my background. Yeah. So I did a lot of uh, cooking and looking at the, the energy, energy of food, but also I am a transpersonal psychologist. I work a little bit as a healer or, you know, really looking a little bit all the energy in all the ways as yeah. human being needs to be looked at. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many areas and so many pockets of knowledge that in the end, I guess you started maybe from one thing, but then start adding other uh, teachings, no? Where, where did you really start it from? And how did you, how did you, because I know you, you wrote many books, you know, so there's a whole journey right there. That's, that's right, yes. I, I started with food, uh, thinking that, you know, we need to eat a little more healthier. Uh, my first 18 years of my life, I was eating normal, traditional Mediterranean cooking. And then I, I was, you know, I was aware about that. It was necessary to start eating a little more powerful uh, food or more alive, more fresh. So I became vegetarian. Um, I also did a lot of um, raw food as well. I, I, I try, I try because in the youth it's very good to try many things. <laughs> um, then, you know, I realized that um, it was, was interesting to, to look a, a more holistic with whole grains and vegetables so I started looking at that and I established doing you know cooking and, and being a teacher with energy but then I realized well you know I'm eating very well and still my emotions are not really balanced enough so then I realized wow I have an emotional body too so I need to start really looking and exploring that so then I did my, my, my teaching or, and my training of transpersonal psychology and many other different, you know, just style and many different things. Mm -hmm. And then um, I thought, wow, we have more energy, you know, our physical body, emotional mind, vibration. So then is when I established more in Glastonbury in England, also to really learn from many different teachers there too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. Can, can we say that the more we... Uh, unlock those blockages the more energy we have and the higher higher vibration w we have yes of course you know because we can have blockages at physical emotional uh, mental and it's important to work all of them at the same time and this is the difficulty in human beings we are busy every day we need to have the children to the school and go to work and everything but we need, we need to start getting more conscious and awareness about all our bodies. Yeah? One of my books is, you know, Food and Emotions, and I talk about the three bodies, physical, emotional, and, and mental. And the three bodies, they need different kind of food. Yeah. You cannot give only, you know, chocolate cake to an emotion, uh, emotional body because it doesn't have any digestive system, the emotional body. Maybe the emotional body needs a hug or needs to, you know, walk in the seaside or, or hug a tree or whatever, you know. So it's important to start getting awareness of the needs of our bo our bodies and then through that of course you become much more balanced yeah. yeah does it come through a particular body or it can come from any of those bodies is there some kind of progressively it comes to us and finally it affects us physically or how does it work yes of course you know we know the power of the mind okay now we have so many books about that so you know our mind uh, our thoughts creates our reality 
It's, as this is already, thank goodness, that now many, many other teachers are saying that as well. So whatever we think, we create our emotions, and through our emotions affects our physical body, or vice versa as well. If you eat really poor food, you know, uh, takeaways and processed food, it's going to also affect the emotions. This is, uh, it is already, I didn't invent it, this was 5,000 years ago, you know, the Chinese people already invented, uh, you know, the Chinese medicine. We know that each organ is related to the different emotions. So if I have a lot of, for example, uh, things, alcohol, or that really depletes the kidneys, for example, excess, many people do that, then the kidneys will create a neg negative emotion, this fear. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this fear is going to also affect our mind as well. So it's, it's you know, it's a, it's a round, it's a circle, uh -huh. it's a circle. Yeah. Is there some particular blockages related to a particular culture, let's say in Spain, do you notice, because you've traveled all around the world, that there is some kind of ways of eating that are good in some ways because a culture, I guess a certain culture need a certain type of food, but that might be uh, deficient in some other ways? I mean, what is your understanding of that? Well, uh, it's very fantastic, the Mediterranean uh, diet that people say, but it seems that now it's getting narrow, narrower and narrower, and this is only my opinion, or my, my humble opinion. You know, before Mediterranean, for me, the understanding was about eating grains and vegetables and, you know, and nuts and fruits from the tree. For me, Mediterranean is that, you know, all the energy and, and all the uh, ingredients and food from, from Mother Earth. This is what, for me, now, seems that it's only just ham, jamón and, and, and wine, you know, so it's getting narrower. Mm -hmm. And through doing that, also people are getting also a little more sick. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, you know, so I think we need to start looking again, you know, the, the, the origin of Mediterranean diet. This is important because it really is what I really believe and I teach for all these years, you know, all the, the things that Mother Earth is giving to us, vegetarian energy is going to make us very healthy. Um, so now it's getting different and people are getting, you know, a lot of cholesterol and, and blood, high blood pressure and they are very fat and this is for the excess of animal food. Mm -hmm. You know, Mediterranean diet is uh, eating vegetables, not eating, you know, so much uh, excess of, of uh, meat, for example. If we look a little bit 200 years ago, people were not eating every day, five, day, five times a day uh, meat, for example. They were eating maybe once uh, on Sunday or maybe Christmas time. You know, it was common sense and people were getting were much, much better. They were not so fat and not so many problems. So I think now we have this kind of big block of people eating a lot of animal food, creating, you know, uh, all these blockages in our liver, for example. And we know if our liver is not working well, our emotion, for example, is going to be anger and very aggressive and, you know, an overweight, etc. Uh, yeah. many, many different things. While if you have a lot of alcohol, for example, or things that demineralize you, we will talk maybe later about that, you know, a lot of um, quick sugar, for example, uh, vinegars, ex different things, you know, we create a very low, poor kidney energy. Yeah. And then we have fear, we have a kind of victim of love, we feel, you know, or oh dear, you know, we complain about everything. So I think now in the society uh, is much people are eating very sensorial way. Um, and what do you mean by that? Sensorial so through the senses? Sensorial, yeah. And I think is we need to have a look, you know, way of eating in many different levels. Always I divide uh, the way of eating in seven levels. The first level is a basic. I'm hungry, so I'm going to eat. I thank goodness, it's good that. <laughs> the second level is sensorial. I like or I don't like. Okay? Oh, I like that. And people only just stay in that level, yeah. you know. And who says, I don't like it. You know, it's a kind of childish way of eating. And I think it's great to, you know, to eat. My food is fantastic, you know, with its uh, textures and colors and smells. And it's beautiful. But not only that, we need to go a little more up. The third level is emotional. So here we are as well. Many people eat according how they feel. Yeah. Uh, the boyfriend is left, so I have more chocolate or whatever, you know. Yeah. And it's okay to do once in a while that, but every day sensorial and emotional level is more. Yeah. Um, the fourth level is intellectual. So here we are, calories and carbohydrates and only mine, you know, that it's okay. We need to know what our body needs, but uh, we need to have a little more understanding and more depth. 
the fifth level is social level. So this one is very, very important. And now, you know, many people are getting more awareness. Means, you know, get, getting ecological food, looking the land, the planet Earth, you know, start look, recycling, you know, this, thank goodness, and now we are more and more people are awareness about that. And we should do that, you know, much more. The sixth level is ideological. And this comes, you know, diets and, you know, people are, in, are slave of their way of eating. You know, they go with a book under their arm, you know, and when they say, do you want to pitch? Oh, I don't know. Is that forbidden? Why oh, can't eat it? And this is really, you know, is no way of eating either. And the seventh level is energy. Looking the reaction of each food. The same as many wise people in the planet Earth, they said, Hippocrates, Platon, Descartes, uh, many different people, they knew that. You mean how our body reacts to a certain kind yeah. of food? Number one, understanding the effect, the effect of food, because everything is different. If I have a glass of water or a glass of whiskey, the energy is very different. I will change my vibration and nobody can say otherwise because it's true. Mm -hmm. If I have a piece of meat or I have a carrot, my energy is going to be very different too. So how do you define, uh, just a little, little thing here, how do you define vibrational, you know, our vibration? How do you define that? Is that our energy level? Is it more? Yeah, it's the, the energy that everything that we eat and drink generate in us. Okay. okay, we can see that very clear maybe the 25th of December, Christmas Day. <laughs> when people come at home, for example, you know, they come for an, a nice meal as a family meal and see how they, they are when they arrive and see how they are when they leave, for example. Okay, sometimes people overeat and overdrink and you can see the, the emotions and the way they eat, they, they say things and they are very different. Okay, so yeah, food and drinks really change our physical body and our mind. For example, alcohol is forbidden when we drive. They say, please don't drink that because it's going to change your vibration and you will not have concentration and you can have an accident, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everything. And society still is not aware about that yet, mm -hmm. you know, in a depth. There are many people and this is the work we are doing, you know, that, you know, what do I need in my life? What is my goal, my purpose i want to be concentrate i want to achieve that so i'm going to eat according to that it's mm. very important and the more we have a high vibration the more we are aware the more we hear things the more we're in the present moment right the more we 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 we, we p not push away but uh, we we escape diseases or, or other things right because yeah. then our body becomes weak huh? That's right, yeah, of course, you know, this is the most important, you know, one of the most important to create health. But I think it's not, not the only thing, it's, you know, it's to become peaceful. For me, the work I'm doing is to create a peaceful world. Uh -huh. This is most important. You know, if I am not angry, if I am more peaceful, you know, then I will be better with myself, better with my family, better with the world. And this is important. Uh -huh. This is an important thing. So, you know, extreme food creates extreme reactions in mind in emotions and in the body so you know i try in my way of eating you know to really not to use this food as i said you know the group for example of saturated fats for example you know that uh, is not necessary uh, especially physically also su sustainable are they sustainable you know can we all the planet eat meat. No, it's not possible that. You know, we know that maybe 30% of the planet is eating that when 70% they are really dying from hunger, for example. We know that, for example, one kilo of meat, you know, cost us 15,000 liters of water to have it on the, on the table. You know, when people are really dying from, they cannot drink anything. So I think we need to start getting, we are a lot of people in the planet now. Uh, so our way of eating is needs to be different. We have a very sedentary life too. We are not going to the river to wash our, you know, our cloth there every day, you know. So we are just in our homes with central heating and everything. So we don't need to have, you we know. We don't need meat at all? That's what you, 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 you recommend? Well, this is my personal view. Everybody can do whatever. But my personal view is that, no, we don't need to have any meat. You know, there are, you know I didn't eat meat for 40 years and I am really happy with that. We don't need to have any, yeah. you know. We need, but we need to understand energy of food. Yeah. We need to really make a carrot or a or, or, or dish of lentils or whatever with the energy of meat. Yeah. Okay, and we, we can do that. Uh, we can through do that. intentions or through intention or through alchemy. 
through alchemy in our in our kitchen okay so maybe the carrot i put a little bit of seasoning or i put a little bit of uh, something that has warming effect and nourishing and 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 then we can create the same effect so this is important is what i created you know uh, energetic way of eating how about the nutrients and the vitamin and all that do you think it's overrated uh, we talk so much about that about the calcium you know we need a certain i know you, you probably this is another topic but you know the calcium and you need the proteins and this and that what is your view on it the most important it seems like it's uh, the energy and the vibration of the food and how it was made and all that is the most important no no uh, it's important to look the intellectual side as well okay so our body that is you know what we our body needs every single day a little bit of carbohydrates to create energy Okay, and there are many different kinds of carbohydrates. Okay, there are uh, quick sugars or slow sugars. So I recommend always to have a slow sugars in form of grains, whole grains. For me, whole grains are seeds of life. Mm. If I plant a little bit of uh, one grain, you have a plant there. Mm. You know, you are, if I plant a little bit of flour, nothing is going to happen. So for me, whole grain is very important. Will create concentration and a stable energy. Mm -hmm. Many people oh, these days they don't have a, sta a stable energy. Mm -hmm. You know, in the middle of the morning goes down. In the yeah. middle of the afternoon, from between four and six, everybody wants quick sugar. You know, because they don't have it because they don't have whole grains. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. A little bit of whole grains doesn't mean the whole the whole plate, but a little bit of whole grains every day in mm -hmm. each meal it's important. What are those? Can you say whole the lentils? Sure. Yeah. Uh, brown rice. Everybody knows brown rice, millet, barley, oats, uh, buckwheat, quinoa, um, rye, uh, spelt, wheat, uh, and many people uh, now they don't they don't have any wheat, so that's a matter. Either. Gluten is a big topic. Yeah. Huh? It's a big topic because people digestive system is very very weak now, yeah. very weak. So it doesn't matter if you, you you don't need to have the people that they don't have any wheat, celiac people they can have very very well uh, brown rice, uh, millet, quinoa, and buckwheat. Okay, these are fine for mm -hmm. celiac people, no problem, and are very nice and very digestible. Yeah. So this is grains that give us, you know, a stable energy and nourish nervous system. You know, now people are, they don't have very good, strong nervous system either. People have lack of concentration, insomnia, many different hyperactivity, okay, because they don't have brown rice or they have whole grains. Yeah. Do, you, do you go into the whole intolerance because many people are intolerant versus allergic? It's not the yeah. same. And because uh, there's, uh, in France, we do, you know, blood tests and things like that yeah. to know exactly is that something that you're yes. into? Yes, yes. Well, many people, they have now a lot of intolerance, but it's very curious, very, very interesting interesting that maybe they come with three pages of intolerance you know they come the first day you know look I'm intolerant to everything you know only there to breathe I, I am intolerance but slowly when they get stronger and stronger eating really powerful and alive food people don't have so much they do another blood test another intolerance test you know and really gets narrow maybe gets narrow to cashews or or something like that that sometimes is true okay but many things no it really this looks that is immune system yeah. the immune system is getting very weak but when you get stronger is okay yeah. another uh, ingredient that we use okay is protein of course you know we need protein for our muscles and internal heat and everything and uh, but we have two kinds of, of protein animal protein or vegetarian protein so i recommend more to really learn about how to do vegetarian protein Okay, and this is something that we did 200 years ago, 100 years ago, people were eating much more vegetarian proteins. You know, they have beans, for example. Okay, and now people, they cannot digest beans. They say, oh, I cannot eat it, you know. But the problem is not the poor lentil. The lentil is okay, you know. Mm -hmm. The problem is maybe you had a lot of pastry with the, a lot of with artificial yeast, for example, yeah. that really destroys the, the digestive system. When you have a lot of bloating, a lot of yeast, or maybe some sugary drinks with gas and everything, this is really, you know, is really affecting the digestive system. And then when you have beans, you have a problem too. So we need to start learning how to make vegetarian proteins, beans, fish, I recommend fish. You know, we cannot cut everything at once. It's very important to go very slowly. Mm. So I don't recommend meat. No, I don't recommend saturated fats. I don't recommend it. But fish is different. Okay, fish is that is not a saturated fat. But we get lost too, because we, even with fish, you know, in France right now, there's so many different uh, uh, documentaries on uh, on fish, you know, on uh, being uh, wild or not, and and the problem with that, and how they, they you know, they not contaminate us, but we, we 
we receive that. We put that in our body. Yeah? I know, I know. We know. Quality is, is very much an issue now. Very important, very important. But if we look a little bit, what is not contaminated in the planet Earth right now? You know, everything, you know, human beings have been destroying quite a lot. So little fish, and of course, if it's wild, it will be fantastic. Yeah. You know, maybe two, three times a week, a little bit of fish. And OX, a little bit, if somebody's very deficient in protein, is very skinny, so it's okay a little bit, it's fine. Okay, but we need to start cutting down all this saturated fat because it's not really not helping our body, you know, our, our physical body, heart and weight and everything, plus as well, when you have this kind of meat, we get aggressivity and then we want alcohol, we want sugar, you know, it's a dynamic of energy, yeah. so it's, it's not necessary. I have a few more questions regarding, you know, raw food diet, fruit diet, all the way to living from the prana, you know, breathinarians, and these are topics that are more and more, you know, more and more people seem to live this way, but I want to have your perception of it. But first, you know, raw food, is that something that you recommend? Yes, yes, I didn't finish about the ingredients, oh, like, yeah, yeah, like it was grains and protein and then some minerals in, in form of some seaweed, for example, okay. and vegetables and, fr and seeds and nuts, of course, you know, all these really, you know, it, we can use it very well. So, but raw things, um, I recommend it a little bit, but when? Raw thing, when people really like to have a raw salad in the winter when it's pouring rain or in the summer in the beach. Well, when it's summer, because raw things has a cooling effect. Yeah. You know, so it's just common sense, understanding the energy. Mm -hmm. You know, if I feel very hot, I will have a salad or I have, you know, uh, a nice uh, fruit or whatever. But if I feel really weak with a little bit of a cold, it's pouring rain, it's damp, you know, it's much better to have a really hot soup with lentils or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, just common sense. Yeah. Less uh, automatism because we have a tendency uh, to, to go into one uh, habit. Yeah. Yes, habit. So sometimes people say, oh, I feel very, I feel very cold. Maybe I have some mint tea. You know, mint tea is a cooling effect, for example. You know, it, and it's great to have it for cooling. Even people have it in the desert, in Africa or in Marrakesh or whatever. The mint has cooling effect. So if you feel very, very cold, don't have mint. You know, have a licorice tea, a thyme tea, a rosemary, for example. You know, something has more warming effect. Add some cayenne pepper. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe, 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 maybe cinnamon will be much better, you know, because, or ginger, for example, that has more warming mm -hmm. effect, yeah. you know. So it's what I try to do is to, to people to see the effect of everything and then they can choose with freedom whenever they need it uh -huh. okay so nothing is forbidden no it just you know use it mint is cooling you feel cold have it you uh, you feel hot you know hot you know it's up to you you know so mm -hmm. it's very important to have it that way yeah so not the raw food not 100 percent. okay no so raw food uh, some people they use it all the time i try i try when, when i was very young i try all the disciplines i had only raw food i tried you know only fruit as well and for me it was not working for me it was not working to have a hundred percent only raw why well i have only one stomach you know and i think that animals in nature when they have a lot of raw things you know you know they, they are you know they can really digest it slowly raw every a hundred percent raw creates a lot of uh, cooling effect cooling effect in their body mm -hmm. And um, also the digestive system goes slow down, okay, so... But the energy level is stable, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah because, uh, you know, because if the, the food is organic and is good quality, of course you are eating a live food, yeah. okay? Yeah. Um, but I have a mixture, I prefer more a middle way, mm -hmm. you know, in the summer more raw things, of course, and in the winter more, more mm -hmm. warming, and learning how to cook things, how to make a carrot with the energy of a, of a, um, a piece of meat, or how to have a carrot, you know, I, here I, I teach people uh, many different cooking styles, like 20 different ones. We can create a carrot that has is, is slowing and relaxing, or activating, or warming, cooling, nourishing, uh, cleansing, okay? Only just by cooking in a different way. So this is important to understanding that. Not only the energy of food, the energy how to cook it, the energy how to combine it as well, the effect, because many people, they combine things yeah. sensorial, And here we are, like, some, some combinations are terrible, yeah. you know, and then people have in terrible problems with the digestive system. So it's important to learn how to combine things too. Give to us some combinations that are not good that we might currently yeah. eat. <laughs> so for example, you know, beans, okay, that people already are not very well digesting for the moment, okay, with lots of spices. 
Okay, spices have a, a expanding energy, and bean as well. Okay, the bean has kind of gas. Okay, expanding energy, and the spice is the same. You know, some um, some countries they know how to use it, and they're okay. You know, you go to India, and people there, original people from there, it's great for them because you know it's ancestor, it's an ancestor way of eating, and they are great. But you know, you know, many people from France, from here, they go to India, they come, everybody come with diarrhea. Okay, because we are not used to have so many spices. Mm -hmm. So I here I don't recommend to have beans with lots of spices, for example. Uh, is not very good or fruit in the meal you know meals you know i think fruit should be always in uh, in between the meals you know mm -hmm. in the middle of the morning in the afternoon but you know you cannot have you know some vegetarian protein or whatever and then have a piece of melon because this is going to affect you mm -hmm. or yeah things like that it was interesting for me when i went to japan to to see how they finish with the rice how about that is it something that you see in a, it's it's is it for just for them or for us too that we should finish with the rice at the end well this is the kaiseki cuisine when you go to a really fantastic restaurant in Japan and they do kaiseki cuisine and they give you 20, 30 dishes and you are just there, you know, really fantastic. Mm -hmm. The sign that the meal is finished is when they bring you a tray with a little bit of rice, a little bit of pickle and miso soup, okay? Mm -hmm. So they finish. But usually, normally, you know, the rice is, is eaten in the middle of the meal, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so rice and vegetables and everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it's very no, nice. It seems like there is a certain order to a of, of food or some, some people um, say, okay, you, you separate different types of foods or you have it in a certain sequence and even in France yeah. we heard at some point of starting with a dessert I mean there's been so many things going on yes, having the melon in the beginning isn't it you know well I feel that having fruit immediately and then having meal I don't recommend it you know food have it two hours before in the middle of the morning or something and then the meal I don't recommend a combined dish Okay, with a little bit of what our body needs, a little bit of grain, a little bit of protein, some vegetables, a little bit of seaweed as well from minerals, from the calcium that we were talking before. Okay, so it would be a plate with a little bit of everything. It's very important. And then you keep eating. Okay, finishing with rice, for me, doesn't make much sense. I start with rice or, or millet or whatever, and then I eat a little bit of beans or a little bit of fish and have a little bit of vegetables and keep going like that. Usually I finish the meal with the most fresh a thing that I have in my dish. If I have a salad, or I have a little bit of broccoli, cook lightly, crunchy, something refreshing. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, finishing the meal with something dry, and maybe salty, mm, no, because then I will feel like I want to continue eating. So I prefer more to finish with something refreshing. Yeah. You know, the, the, the last bit of salad, or the last bit of, the last bit of uh, greens, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but and steamed food? Yeah, steam in favor. It depends where what you want to do regarding the carrots, for example. Yeah, steam food, uh, steaming is one of the twenty different ways of cooking at a carrot. Okay, Only so one of twenty. One, yeah. <laughs> so which kind of energy has a steaming? So relaxing. Okay, usually I teach my students, you know, to really feel it, to live that. So I make them to, to be inside the pot, you know, like a carrot, and you are there steaming, and which, which kind of energy do you, fa you have? Oh. So steaming is relaxing, so maybe it's very good for the evening time, for dinner, because then you're going to relax and go to the bed, for example. Okay, but you, we have many different ways. You have sautés, long sauté, quick sauté, and baking, and stews, and casseroles, and many different ways that has different energy. So not everything is steaming. And now it seems that, you know, the alternative way is steaming. And it's very boring just only seeing life with the steaming eyes, you know. Yeah. So I prefer more to do it according how I feel. I feel very cold, so maybe I do that carrot in the oven, yeah. you know, to create more warmth because I feel cold. I feel hot. Maybe I make it the carrot raw. I make a salad. Or I make it, or I feel a little lack of energy, so I'm going to do activating. I do a walk, a quick saute with a lot of movement and energy, uh -huh. okay, because it's also the intention and how you cook it, create the energy. Uh, it's very important. Going back to those blockages and the emotions, the overweight in our society, what do you... Is, is, it, is it related directly to that? Is it because there's a, more and more of a discomfort? I mean, is it... Yeah, well, people want to have quick food it's an, and they don't, they don't want to have time cooking. Okay, and it's very, very important. Of course, I teach my students saying the most important thing, you know, is time. Okay, because when you cook things with time, you create a lot of sweetness. Okay, uh, if you give time to somebody or, or whatever, 
okay, you, you receive sweetness, okay, so it's the same thing, and people now don't have any time. Mm -hmm. They want, you know, microwave and frozen, and this is not going to give health. Mm -hmm. So in the terms of, of uh, meat or saturated fats and things like that, or overweight, okay, and this is the problem, because um, the meat will create overweight, cholesterol and everything, but also take away, because it's high of uh, sodium, high of uh, additive and things like that also, you know, so it's the, the two things and in the society unfortunately now many children already they have obesity you mm. know many people or many children already and um, it's, it's, it's really uh, I think it's a pandemia in Spanish no a epidemic now so the key to change that is to learn how to cook vegetarian proteins mm. in a delicious way yeah. this is, but people, people don't know how to cook and because they don't know, so, oh, this lentil or this, uh, this other vegetarian proteins. I use seitan, that is, I use tofu, I use tempeh, you know, as well. Many different things. I can make a quiche, you know, in, in Spanish it's very common. I make quiche, I make, a, you know, many different traditional food. Uh, that is delicious, but you need to learn. If yeah. you learn how to make vegetarian protein, you feel satisfied. Yeah. And then isn't it more than learning because it seems like there is a certain blockage or, or something that would prevent regarding, regardless of using different techniques at the end there's something that needs to be healed you know inside of us well, so that we don't go back to those because otherwise it's kind of a band-aid and we keep on going back to our old habits at some point yeah well the key the, the center of the onion is self-love <laughs> this is the most important and self-respect and slowly slowly now the planet earth is is awakening everybody more and more people are coming more and more people saying I want to feel better not only in my physical body in my spirit in my peace I want to have inner peace so rather than having meat that is going to get create a lot of aggressivity mm -hmm. you know I want to start looking vegetarian foods this is great but we need to do it properly because some people just only want to have a book or they want to do it by themselves and can be, then they can create deficiencies as well, mm -hmm. you know, for the family, for their children. So please do it properly, mm -hmm. you know, so start changing. The, the key, the most important thing for me is to change from animal food to, veget to uh, protein that is vegetarian. And if you do that, the whole perspective of um, diet change, mm -hmm. because then you don't want so much alcohol. If you don't have meat mm -hmm. and you have only chickpeas or tofu, tempeh or something like that, you don't, you're not, not attracted to alcohol. Mm -hmm. You're not attracted to so much sugar, for example, everyday sugar and chocolate mm -hmm. or ice cream. You don't want that. So the number one step is to change, mm -hmm. to really be aware of that, but do it properly mm -hmm. with somebody that knows, mm -hmm. okay? Because if not, some people are eating meat and now tomorrow I'm eating only lettuce and carrots. No, it's, it's, it's going to get a deficiency. So from meat, for example, reduce, go slowly, changing a little bit from red meat to white meat. You know, we have plenty of time and, and fanatism doesn't go to anywhere. You know, I really feel that yeah. it's important that, and then, you know, go to fish, you know, and then learn in the same time of this transition how to cook vegetarian protein with the energy of this animal food. You know, you can do it in a sensorial way too. The, the ingredients that I said to you before, grains and beans and everything, you know, things that we need, cook in the way that we like it. Yeah. It is important yeah. because pleasure, is important. pleasure yeah. sensorial as well, yeah. but with the food, you know, we yeah. can make dumplings, but we don't have need to have meat. We can have it with some, with seitan or with tofu, for example, you know, we can make a fantastic burger, but we can do it with other ingredients, much more easy to digest and, and that give us more inner peace. Mm -hmm. And then through that, you know, our uh, organs are going to get much better. And then, you know, our em emotions as well, you know, the, the liver is not going to get, we will not be so angry when we it up in the morning you know and we will change you know mm. people see that see, you know slowly yeah as we change our food it feels like we're as you're saying that we're becoming more and more conscious more aware more in the present moment inner peace starts our whole world outside change uh, we hear more and more in our society of breathinarians and people you know, living from the prana, the life force. And wh what do you think about that? Have you met some? Have you tried also? What is your perception on it? 
Well, I think it's fantastic, and uh, I would like to try, but maybe when I retire in the middle of the mountains there, you know, with a lot of nature, you know, that really can nourish me, and I don't have anything else to do, I can really, you know, harmonize with the universe, then it would be fantastic. But in the meantime, that I'm here in Barcelona, you know, teaching, you know, all the time and doing this and that, you know, I don't think, or at least I don't know how to do it myself, yeah. that, you know. I think it's okay, but uh, I think it's to have a lot of time for really... Um, you know, for really nourishing yourself in that way. You yeah. know, uh, I feel, you know, family with children and, you know, taking them to the school and rushing around, you know, I think can be very dangerous. You know, so yes, I know a few people. And uh, if you don't do properly, you know, I, I, th I think really needs to be with a teacher and um, yeah. and be totally in nature because, you know, uh, we, we can see uh, some movies and people, you know, we see all that, you know, but if you see them, they are totally in nature, praying and being with themselves and nourishing. Yeah. If, of course, you know, the sunshine and nature give us a lot of energy, of course, you know, but if we are all day busy doing other things and paying the mortgage and, and talking to somebody and being in a city, it will be very difficult to do that, yeah. okay? It needs to be totally consciousness. Yes, maybe this will be the aim of human being in thousands of years, maybe, but for the moment we need to go to change to from meat to have no meat, yeah. okay? I believe in slow changes, slow changes that are going to be common sense. This is most important. And, and you know, if you just are eating meat now and you're having McDonald's and now I'm not going to eat, I, I don't believe that. I believe in gradually going into, yeah, towards that, but in a slow way, yes. Yeah. So you have right now, there's a seminar going on. This is your institute in the middle of Barcelona. This is exciting. This is quite a, a step in one's career to have a, a place like that where you can welcome people and everything. So congratulations for, for teaching and for sharing your work. Do you travel also during the seminars or you're, it's main, you're mainly based in Barcelona? Well, when I was a little younger, you know, I was traveling all around the world, you know, all Europe, teaching everywhere. Now I am based a little more in Barcelona, but yes, I do a few trips a, a year as well, you know, uh, here and there, but I prefer more people are coming here yeah. and learning on site. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Big, big kisses to all Juicy co-creators watching this video. Much, much love. Please share this video. Big, big kisses. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.